Hello and welcome back everyone to Space Simulation Toolkit. I know it's been a while, I know, I know. I'm, I'm sorry, I apologize. I know you guys should be the center of my life, but I've been a little busy, you know, with a, with a child, uh, went back to college, got my degree, yay, degree, woo! I, I mean, I was already in the workforce, but I wanted to get it anyways. And uh, also, I uh, got a new job, so that's exciting too. So many things going on in my life. And it's all because you guys supported me since I was a young child. Thank you. Um, anyways, Space Simulation Toolkit update. This one is really trippy, actually. We have like a hundred planets just planeting. I'm I, not sure... Not, not sure which one I live on. Probably this one. This is the golden planet. This is the Spike Viper approved planet. My graphics card is just like, why are you making me do this right now? But, uh, we're gonna play around with the other ones. Oh, look, some of the icons have changed, I think. These do look different. At least the rock and uh, soil ones, unless I'm crazy. Let's see if there's, a oh, oh, yeah, a couple of things are a little bit better in the UX now. All right, but I want to uh, mess around with things. So first, first I want to spin one of these until it explodes, because that is my that is how I judge planets. Their explosion potential. This one looks really nice. If you live on this planet, please let me know in the comments down below, and I will send you a Costco gift card to make up for the destruction of your planet. We. Oh yeah, that was some gl good explodability. The shockwave from that explosion is smacking into other planets. Um, but overall, I mean, still still has a core. That's all you need. You just live on the molten uh, 3,000 degree core. Uh, just wear very thick, very thick boots and you're going to be fine, I promise. Uh, you, you've been through worse. I don't know what's going on in the center of the uh, universe. We've got we've got weird stuff go. Actually, there's like this tsunami of superheated water and steam, which is snaking its way through the world and kind of attacking this planet here. And then it's just promptly freezing, but it's actually causing, there's so much mass that it's causing the center of gravity of the planet to move and it's ripping the core out, out of the planet. That That is generally bad for your planet. I am curious how this is going to affect the local trout population. I mean, a trout could live in here, right? It's water. Huh. Having that much water injected into the core of your planet, generally bad for the planet. And it looks like the, the actual surface of the planet has just been absolutely just ripped off and now it's floating on top of an ocean Oh, oh, and now the superheated water is starting to break through the crust. There are still surviving plants, though, so truly, truly, it couldn't be that bad. Could it be that bad? All right, let's see what else is going on. Over here, we have, like, this floating plant, uh, like, utopia. They're just growing in the atmosphere of this planet between this hot this hot steam and, and this water over here. There's just like this, this golden zone where the plants are really surviving, really doing a good job. Um, and then this, this planet's actually doing really well considering it's near the center. Um, we do have some interesting things going on outside. Like this, this planet is spinning so quickly, I don't know why. Maybe from the effect of the one I exploded, but it just threw its crust off. Like, it just flung it. Yeah, this is happening in a few places. I think it's the plants growing is actually imparting some force, which is causing them to spin. Or something. I'm not actually sure why some of these planets are spinning so quickly, but it seems to be the ones with a lot of plants. And a lot of liquid. Um... Oh, I guess there's a lot. No, the most plant ones are spinning the fast. I think I think the plants are legitimately, are the growth of the plants is legitimately causing the planets to spin, which is an interesting effect. And now there's like 
plant life just drifting through space and colonizing other planets. Life is spreading. Uh, not how I'd expect it to spread, but it's spreading. Center of the universe, still really odd things going on here. Um, like this. I don't know why there's so much force and movement over here. Holy moly. Over here, too, this planet just explodes. Oh, it just sent a tsunami at this planet! Oh, man, and when that all that energy gets pushed into the other planets, they start spinning and freaking out, and, and it's... This this chaos, this entropy is spreading from the center. I wonder if at the end it's just going to be an absolute mess or if any of the planets are just going to, to survive. I mean, over here we have kind of like another plant utopia. The plants are doing incredibly well over here. Um, drifting planet to planet, growing into really nice lush forests, but there there are threats. Like, like this right here, this huge wall of steam being ejected from this water planet is now about to smack into this planet. Overall, I don't think it's going to destroy- uh, some of the plant is dying. Some of the plant is dying. oh my god, and it's setting another one, even more- even- uh, even hotter material is being ejected. The biggest issue is that uh, effect where it causes the center of gravity of the planet to move. If the center of gravity goes outside of the physical core, it generally ends up just ejecting its crust, which is not good. Not good for the uh, local trout population. We also have the opposite, where you have like no water left on this planet, which means the plants obviously aren't going to be able to grow much further. Like this right here. Ooh. This is just plant, and because there's no water to heat up and evaporate, it's it's kind of overheating, which is causing the plants to actually catch on fire. Uh, there's a little bit of fire over here. It's almost like life is a balance, and, and, and when the balance is is broken, things get really bad really quickly. Um, not as bad as whatever is going on here. I still have. I still have absolutely no clue what is happening in the center of this simulation. Um, it's just constant chaos. You got like... Water planet with massive... Massive chunks of ice. Floating continents. Um, towards the center, these floating continents kind of inverse planets are super common. This whole area. And then as you get further out... You have your, your ice planets, which kind of just, you know, are chill, literally. And then some of them are kind of in between, but that middle, that Goldilocks zone, you kind of see that circle of green, where you have lots of habitable planets that are just surviving. Um, but this is spreading. Like this, this unstable, constant onslaught of water is just attacking these planets one by one taking them out. It's it's infectious. There's so much energy in the center. And it has nowhere to go until, well, it finds somewhere to go, which is your backyard, and then it melts you and your family. Got a huge wave coming off of this one. I'm curious if I tweak some of the simulation parameters a little bit. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn the maximum velocity up to 5,000. I want to see if anything actually starts moving fa Oh yeah, 100% we start getting things moving faster. Wow! Like, really wow. So the, the chaos was actually being held back by the simulation parameters, but allowing that to move even faster, we get some serious movement. Serious movement! I need a little stick men to start colonizing these planets. Now technically things can move fast enough to probably get flung out of the simulation entirely. Like these little guys, yeah look, this one's just gonna keep going forever. Which means that the amount of material in play in the simulation should kind of go down over time. I mean there, there isn't really that much that's been flung flung out of bounds yet. 
There, there aren't really bounds. They just bounce, but it's still a long travel time. So anything that's in this area is effectively not in the simulation for a long time. And when it falls back down, it's probably going to be ice by then. All right, I'm going. I'm going. I'm going to add. Oh, there's the main sun. Okay, so that's that's what's causing the the temperature differential from the center. Uh, but I'm going to add a gravity source to the very center because I'm curious what will happen. Oh my goodness! Wow. Okay, it must. By default, it must be very powerful compared to these planets because it is. Oh boy! Oh boy! Wow, we're just draining all of their oceans. Some of them are kind of surviving. We're gonna see what happens. We're gonna see what happens. Wow, there is a lot of material, chunks of planets falling off. Obviously, the planets that are closer are far more affected by this. The cores of some of these planets are just being ripped out, and it, it doesn't help that the particles from the planets further away are smacking into them and just shredding them. The outer planets are actually the safest right now, um, although even they are having some problems. It seems like the water, really. The water just has such a high mass and such an ability to, to move. Uh, extreme tides are just causing the water to be ripped straight off of the planets. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. We're getting this kind of really interesting mix now at, in, in the center. Here it is. No, is that? Yeah, that's it right here is the center. I'm curious if this is going to form like a, a planet or if it's just going to be an absolute mixy mess. I mean, it's got material. It's stolen a lot of material. Oh man, and the amount of force in the center is causing so many particles to be ejected. Way more than before. Way more. But there's just so much pressure that it's really just exploding rather than anything, uh... Anything forming permanently. It really is just chaos. Although, an interesting side effect is it seems pulling the water off of a lot of these planets has actually helped more of them become, uh habitable like a lot of these have are turning green that weren't green before they were just submerged in water so odd side effect i think we may have saved a lot of planets by creating an absolute monster although i'm sure this planet doesn't feel doesn't feel that way because it's, it's currently getting absolutely oh my goodness oh my goodness Sorry if you lived here on uh, K2486B. Uh, we do apologize. Our, our customer service will send you your Costco gift card if you have been affected by any uh, solar storms that may or may not be slamming into your planet right now. Oh, this, this one. Wow. Wow. Okay. Like, direct hit. And, oh, is it going to survive? Is it going to survive? I think it's going to survive. That was a direct hit, though. Uh, imagine how, how how life would be if you just had to live knowing there was like a 10% a chance every year that your planet was going to be one-shotted by a massive column of superheated water <laughs> flying from the center of the universe. Okay, yeah, this, this one is going to be... Ooh, ooh, ooh. Kind of missed that planet, but it's going to smack this one right in the face. We. I think it's going to survive, though. I think it's going to survive. It's getting, it's getting pushed a little bit, and uh, half of the life on it got absolutely obliterated. But that's okay. Like I said, the, the planets the furthest out are really the best off now. Like, someone else is going to get hit before you do. But we must, we must, we must go further. Let's increase, increase the energy of the sun. 
Oh wow, they, the UI really has been updated a lot. Look at that. Oh, there's tags and there's sub menus. Oh my goodness. I can close and unclose sections. Oh, beautiful. Excellent. I, I'm really gonna have to do a little bit more playing around with this because so much has been done. Hardness scaling. Oh my goodness, there's there's descriptions I can hover over things? No way. Yo. Yo. I didn't even know, I was so busy focusing on the simulation, I didn't even notice that, like, everything has been updated. Like, I noticed the little icon changes, but this is huge. Like, these, these changes are absolutely massive. Oh, man, that's so cool. That's gonna make a huge difference, actually being able to tell what things are. All right. Well, guys, I think I think we've done enough uh, universal destruction today. Um, although it actually ended out with far more habitable planets that are all quite happy and just living their lives, except there's a slight chance that that they'll be hit by a ray of plasma, um, and the uh, the gargantuan death ray generator in the center of the universe. I think it turned out pretty well. Thank you for watching. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and I will see you all next time. You missed me. I know. But I'm back now. So it's okay. Join Valor.gg.